There are certain things that, as a civilized society, we have all agreed upon are just a net negative. You never ask your parents where and in what position you were conceived in. You never kiss your sister. You never go on a flat earth website. And you certainly would never log on to Twitter. Now, in this latest governing body update, Watchtower commits one of these foul, satanic, societal crimes because they do something that's on the level of someone coming to you and saying, oh man, my grandfather just died. And you saying, hmm, man, that must be tough. Me and my grandpa just went on a hike. The sunset was beautiful. It's like someone coming to you and saying, oh man, things are really tough right now. I just lost my job. Hey, I just got a promotion. I'm feeling great. There's certain things we just don't do, and yet Watchtower has committed one of these foul sins. So let's cover it, because in this governing body update, they are going to position these two things against each other. One group of people that trusted in Jehovah and were doing theocratic activity and following theocratic direction, and they were killed. And this other group of people that were doing theocratic activities, trusting in Jehovah, following the organization, and God protected them. And it's kind of one of those not cool bro moments. Let's get into it. On the evening of Thursday, March 9, 2023, a terrible tragedy happened in Hamburg, Germany, after the midweek meeting concluded. Sadly, four brothers and two sisters, as well as an injured sister's unborn child, were killed. In addition, two brothers and seven sisters were seriously injured. We are happy to report that none of them are in intensive care. Following the shooting, direction was given that all meetings in Hamburg should be held by video conference only. The Hamburg Winterhude congregation deeply desired to come together again for in-person meetings as soon as possible. Shortly thereafter, approval was given for all meetings to resume in person, starting with the very next midweek meeting. Some of the injured were even able to join the meeting from the hospital using Zoom. Watchtower literally never misses an opportunity in order to try and exploit some sort of tragedy for their own propaganda, their own benefit. And so, of course, what do they do? They send the film crew out whenever they are having their next meeting and getting these shots of, you know, people coming together. A full Kingdom Hall, by the way, which is not something that is very common. Uh, here in these last part of the last part of the last days. Uh, even the memorial that I attended, I thought, wow, this Kingdom Hall has a lot of empty seats for memorials because, well, normally memorials were absolutely packed. But uh, that part aside, I just find it really pathetic on Watchtower's part to always, anytime there is death, tragedy, anything that really is gut-wrenchingly sad, they are the, f the first response by Watchtower is to get a film crew out there so they can try and exploit this so that way people feel bad for the organization or think that they're being, you know, persecuted around the world and it fits Watchtower's narrative of them, you know, being like Jesus, you know, suffering for his name. So I, I just find it really in bad taste that they always have the film crews that go out immediately. The Central Europe Branch Committee made immediate arrangements to give comfort and support. To bolster the Relief Committee, which had been appointed, Branch Committee members and their wives travelled to Hamburg and accompanied the responsible circuit overseer. Special meetings were organised to coordinate visits to the affected brothers and sisters, which often meant staying at their side literally day and night. Every day, a tremendous number of letters and cards from all over the world continue to be delivered to the hall. The brothers and sisters are completely overwhelmed and deeply touched by these expressions of affection and fellow feeling. 
This is one of the best parts about being a Jehovah's Witness, this sense of community. When anything bad happens to you, you get this really overwhelming feeling of support from your friends and family members, you know, people that you might not even know all that well, be showing up to your house, bringing you dinner or showing up to the hospital if, you know, there's something going on. And it is a really good feeling and something that I think a lot of us sort of miss whenever we leave the Jehovah's Witnesses because we don't have that sense of community. But I think it is worth saying that this is something that individual Jehovah's Witnesses do. This is, this is not anything to do with the organization, has nothing to do with Watchtower teaching you good principles. This is people being good people, and that's it. And you shouldn't praise the Watchtower organization for what efforts that the individual witnesses are putting forward to make their community a, a more welcoming, loving environment for people to thrive in. All congregations within the state of Hamburg were invited to a memorial service held on Saturday, March 25, 2023. More than 3,000 brothers and sisters attended in person, and over 90,000 connections were made to view this program via stream, many of whom viewed the program with friends and family. All in attendance were touched by the heartwarming words from branch committee members as well as the visiting governing body member and helper. This memorial service provided strong evidence of Christian love, a convincing testimony that Jehovah's people do not face such situations alone. I think it's important to just highlight how he uses this particular phrase of Jehovah's people don't face these types of situations alone, because it's going to be brought up a little bit later on how there might be situations where you get divine intervention, you might get these supernatural powers, but in this particular situation, the question must be asked. They were there at the Kingdom Hall, they were worshipping, and something absolutely horrible happened. Now, of course, Jehovah's Witnesses will say, well, that's just time and unforeseen occurrence. You know, that's what the Bible says is going to happen. But then, if that's the case, you can't at other times claim, well, man, Jehovah really protected us in this situation. You know, we didn't have to face this situation alone. Our brothers in Hamburg have experienced Jehovah's loyal love throughout this very distressing situation. So there you have it. Jehovah's loyal love doesn't do anything to protect anyone from anything, but it's there to support you via what the people around you and your community are doing and would naturally do anyway. Do you, do you see the trick that they're pulling here? I find it absolutely disgusting that there is a pregnant woman that was shot and lost her baby, and she is being told, well, you're experiencing Jehovah's loyal love now because someone wrote you a card. And that's Jehovah's loyal love. Why, it, if it's that easy as snapping his magical fingers and motivating someone to write a card or give you words of encouragement, wouldn't it be that easy to snap your fingers and, I don't know, the gun gets jammed. The person goes and seeks help from a, thera a professional therapist and doesn't actually commit this horrible crime. Wouldn't that be an easier solution? Wouldn't it be easier to stop the thing than to just motivate people to write you get well cards or something? It doesn't make any sense, and it's actually kind of insulting. Now, it's that in and of itself is insulting enough. But what we're going to find uh, through the rest of this update is they go a step farther and talk about divine intervention. When this first happened, I actually was going to make a video, I never actually released it, but of examples where they talk about divine intervention and people you know, being saved and protected you know, because Jehovah was there helping them and then comparing that with what happened there in Germany. And I couldn't believe it. 
Watchtower made the video that I that I was going to make to make them look stupid and silly. They made the video themselves. They released this update and literally did the thing I was going to do in order to make fun of them. It's an absolute brain blaster, so buckle up. Another recent event that's had a significant impact on our brothers and sisters was Cyclone Freddy, which struck East Africa. In February and March 2023, Cyclone Freddy made multiple landfalls and brought strong winds, heavy rain, and flooding. Sadly, in Malawi, eight publishers were killed, and three are currently missing. And in Mozambique, one publisher was killed, and one is missing. At Isaiah 63, 9, it says of Jehovah, during all their distress, it was distressing to him. This assures us that Jehovah is affected too. He's moved to help his faithful servants. Imagine you're someone that was affected by one of these incidents that they've brought up. And here this bozo comes up and says, hey, look at this scripture. It says Jehovah is affected. And that motivates him to help his faithful servants. How does that make you feel? Does that make you feel comforted? Do you have a ooey gooey squishy feeling inside now? Like, oh, God, you know, he, Jehovah, he really, really is motivated to help his faithful servants. This dude is just like spitting in people's faces with this kind of talk. It's absolutely ridiculous for him to say, well, he's motivated to help them. I mean, not you or you or you, but other people. He, he's motivated to help someone other than the people that are affected negatively by random events. He stands ready to help us. But how can we benefit from his help and protection? Well, the answer can be found in what we read at Psalm 91, verse 9. It says, Because you said, Jehovah is my refuge, you have made the Most High your dwelling. It doesn't just say that Jehovah is our refuge, but that we have made him our refuge. We can make Jehovah our refuge by drawing close to him during our trials. How? We lean on him in prayer. We keep up our good spiritual routine. We stay busy in the ministry and we look for ways to encourage others. Yeah. Apparently, what these people were lacking, you know, that were at the Kingdom Hall, worshiping, trying to be good, faithful Jehovah's Witnesses, saying a prayer to have that meeting blessed, apparently they didn't pray hard enough. They didn't pray in the right way. Maybe the people killed didn't say amen after the end of the prayer. Who really knows under this situation? But how is he going to suggest that you will get Jehovah's protection if you keep up your spiritual routine and, you know, make sure you're at meetings and things when that was literally the thing that got people killed. People died because they went to the kingdom hall that day. If they didn't go to the kingdom hall that day, if they didn't keep up their spiritual routine, if they said, ah, I'm a little bit too tired, maybe I'll just join in on Zoom, they would have survived. They would be alive right now. So what are you talking about? I received a text message. I was at home. Pray for Abaco. The devastation to the Kingdom Hall was so complete. That, I think, is forever etched in my mind. You could see the Kingdom Hall chairs and the publications thrown all around. It rips your heart apart to see the Kingdom Hall like that. Perhaps I was dropped on my head a little bit too much as a child and therefore don't have the cognitive ability to really work this out. But I'm just going to throw something out there. Wouldn't it be a massive witness 
for people that were not Jehovah's Witnesses. Wouldn't it be like a really mind-blowing testimony to the power and veracity of the truth that Jehovah's Witnesses have if the Kingdom Hall was the only building standing? Imagine everything in the area was destroyed, and there was the Kingdom Hall, perfectly intact, not a, not a scratch on it, and that happened all over the world. Wouldn't that be powerful evidence that they do have the truth? I mean, talk about wanting to make a good witness. If, if you are God, if you are Jehovah, and Jehovah's Witnesses are your only organization, wouldn't that be the best way to get other people, other outsiders, to say, wow, that is wild. Every time there's a hurricane or something, the Kingdom Hall is always standing. They're never destroyed. Maybe God is protecting these people. That would be powerful evidence. We got to the airport and it looks like there was no way out of the situation. So the brother prayed and after he prayed, it's like a window opened for us to get out of there. We got to Nassau. There was food, there were clothing. There was a, it seemed like we were having a convention when we landed. There were so many brothers there, placards singing to the top of their voice. So you're in the Bahamas and you need to evacuate your island. It looks like you're in a perilous situation. There's no way out. A brother prays and almost magically, the cloud, the storm subsides. You know, Jesus comes out with his hands and says, you know, storm, be calm. And you get to safety where there's people with placards and singing and cookies and warm blankets. Then you're in a kingdom hall in Hamburg, Germany. And you hear shots fired. A brother starts praying, but a gunman just kills your wife or your husband, you know, sitting next to you. Why are they telling this story right after this event happened? Imagine that you were in that kingdom hall where people were no doubt praying and got no such protection. There's a 100% chance that someone from that kingdom hall is going to watch this broadcast. And you, after telling that story, are immediately going to put on your stupid goggles and say, you know what? I think it would be really encouraging to tell a story about how Jehovah divinely parted the, the skies so that way a plane could take off. Again, Watchtower is just spitting in the face of their members. It is so distasteful, it is so disgusting that they talk in this way. I can barely stand it. It, it absolutely just blew my mind watching this. Like When Watchtower decides to actually say something about these tragic events, they do it in quite literally the worst way imaginable. It doesn't matter if there's 10 publishers or 10,000 publishers, Jehovah's going to take care of them. It has been a reunion. A piece of paradise. <laughs> no matter what happens to us, whether it be a natural disaster or unrest or war, we're always going to be there for our brothers. And we're going to support one another. We're going to help each other. And we're going to be OK with Jehovah's help. I'm sorry, but you can't have it both ways. You can't go from, oh boy, it was so sad how these people died when they were at the Kingdom Hall, to then saying, well, Jehovah is sure giving them the strength now, and then give another example of how Jehovah protected people. And even to the point where this lady's like, whether it's, you know, 10 people or whatever she said, we will always have Jehovah's protection. I just, it's not 
okay to think this way, where the organization, which is synonymous with Jehovah God, uh, as I always say, I think I say it probably too much now, but if I was a Christian, Watchtower would be even more offensive to me because of how they substitute themselves, the governing body, the leadership with God. And they're saying that that entity, you know, that Jehovah, that governing body is infallible while they say they're fallible. They can say that you get protection, but sometimes you don't get protection. You say, just pray, you know, be a spiritual person and everything will be okay. But when it's not okay, you're still getting the help you need. It's absolutely disgusting. Either you worship an interventionist God that saves you or you don't. And that's the end of it. Anyway, I know I used to not actually cover any of these governing body updates because uh, they're pretty annoying to actually listen to. But uh, as I've been doing them, it seems like you guys have been enjoying them, so uh, I thought I would give this one another whirl. If you're still around, don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 15,000 subscribers. Boy, howdy. Never thought we would get here. And with all that being said, stay safe, be kind, and don't forget to smile. Zizi, do you want to say it? And you better have a good ass day. I don't know why he sounds like Mickey Mouse.